Good morning, everyone. Our entrance antiphon this morning. Give light to my eyes, lest I fall asleep in death, lest my enemies say I have overcome him. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, my brothers and sisters, may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with all of you. Thank you very much. First of all, good news. Uh, many of you, perhaps not all of you, know that we've had a bird, a hawk, actually trapped in our church for the last several days, and yesterday was finally captured and removed, so thank God for that. Uh, but anyway, so uh, we continue to celebrate our Lenten journey. It's an inward journey to help us see what we need to do in our lives to draw us closer to the Lord. And so let us ask God to continue, help us continue that journey and uh, give him glory and draw closer to him in our lives. And we pray together. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and what I have failed to do through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore, I ask, Blessed Mary, ever-Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. And may Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us all of our sins, and bring us to life everlasting. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Let us pray. <clears throat> Guard your church, we pray, O Lord, in your unceasing mercy. And since without you, mortal humanity is sure to fall, may we be kept by your constant helps from all harm and directed to all that brings salvation. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Please be seated. A reading from the book of the prophet Isaiah. Hear the word of the Lord, princess of Sodom. Listen to the instruction of our God, people of Gomorrah. Wash yourselves clean. Put away your misdeeds from before my eyes. Cease doing evil. Learn to do good. Make justice your aim. Redress the wronged, hear the orphan's plea, defend the widow. Come now, let us set things right, says the Lord. Though your sins be like scarlet, they may become white as the snow. Though they be crimson red, they may become white as wool. If you are willing and obey, you shall eat the good things of the land. But if you refuse and resist, the sword shall consume you. For the mouth of the Lord has spoken. The word of the Lord. To the upright, I will show the saving power of God. Not for your sacrifices do I rebuke you, for your burnt offerings are before me always. I take from your house no bullock, no goat out of your fold. To the upright I will show the saving power of God. Why do you recite my statutes and profess my covenant with your mouth? Though you hate discipline, and cast my words behind you. To the upright I will show the saving power of God. When you do these things, shall I be deaf to it? Or do you think that I am like yourself? 
I will correct you by drawing them up before your eyes. He that offers praise as a sacrifice glorifies me. And to him that goes the right way, I will show the salvation of God. To the upright, I will show the saving power of God. Is to you, Lord Jesus Christ, King of endless glory. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ, King of endless glory. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Jesus spoke to the crowds and to his disciples, saying, The scribes and the Pharisees have taken their seat on the chair of Moses. Therefore, do and observe all things whatsoever they tell you, but do not follow their example. For they preach, but they do not practice. They tie up heavy burdens, hard to carry, and lay them on people's shoulders, but they will not lift a finger to move them. All their works are performed to be seen. They widen their phylacteries and lengthen their tassels. They love places of honor at banquets, seats of honor in synagogues, greetings in marketplaces, and the salutation, Rabbi. As for you, do not be called Rabbi. You have but one teacher, and you are all brothers and sisters. Call no one on earth your father, you have but one Father in heaven. Do not be called Master. You have but one Master, the Christ. The greatest among you shall be, must be your servant. Whoever exalts himself will be humbled, but whoever humbles himself will be exalted. The Gospel of the Lord. <clears throat> I would like you to imagine here a circle. We all know what a circle is. And a circle, the outer part of the circle is called the circumference. That's the, the outer part, right? And the center of the circle is the center. And it, to me, it's a great image um, that reflects <clears throat> both reading today, but especially the gospel, because <clears throat> if that circle represents our life, very often we are tempted to live on the circumference, that superficial outer part. We spend so much time concerned about how we look out there, the, the clothes we wear, the, the things that we have. All those are things on the outside of that circle. And God is continually trying to draw us into the center, that we live from the center of ourselves, our hearts, our souls, that deepest part where God dwells in us, rather than simply living on the outside, from the outside, from the circumference, from that which is superficial. And it's not that the things on the outside, our clothing, our looks are bad, or, or the things that we have and the, the positions we hold, they're not bad, but they're simply not our essence. Our essence comes from who we are here within. And so especially during this Lenten season, we're we're called to focus on that center of our being, that essence of who we are as God's children and who God calls us to be. And so during Lent, the Lenten season, so often we uh, purposely give up things on the outside, the, the things that we enjoy doing. We fast from foods and activities. We, we focus more on prayer, our relationship with God, and that's what's important, not just during Lent but throughout our lives. But Lent helps us to, to really try to focus more clearly on what's important in our lives, our essence. And so uh, both readings have very harsh words. I'm going to focus on the gospel, however. Uh, harsh words directed at the leaders 
at the, the people who are really failing to help others draw closer to that center, that, that, that relationship with God. And so Jesus especially has his harshest words for the religious leaders of his time who so often are living out here on the circumference. He talks about their religious vestments that they wear, you know, uh, exaggerated things to, to make it seem as if they are so holy and perfect that they have no need to, to get any better. They're just, they've already reached perfection. They are so good and so on. And at the same time, not leading people into that center core of their being. Uh, and these are very harsh words, but again, they're words spoken from a certain sense of frustration and of righteous anger. Jesus is so frustrated that these people who should know better don't, and they, uh, he calls them hypocrites. And so, again, the ostentatiousness of their uh, outer garments, of how they love to sit in places of honor, all those things, they're part of the perks of that circumference of that superficial kind of life. And Jesus saying, no, it's what's inside that counts. Again and again, he's telling them throughout the Gospels, but especially in chapter 23 of Matthew, that they are living uh, on, on a superficial level in their life, and they should be going much deeper to their center. Um, the hypocrisy he speaks about is, is pretending to be somebody they're not. Again, as if they have everything together in their lives, they're so holy and prayerful and so on. He says it's not true. Jesus never condemns a sinner in the Gospels. He never condemns people who are sinners, whether it's tax collectors, prostitutes. The people he condemns are those who are hypocrites, who are hypocrites, who don't realize or don't admit that they're sinners. Those are the ones he, he really rails against because they are living a false life. They are hypocrites. And so the antidote to all this is what Jesus says at the end of the gospel. Humble yourself. The one who humbles himself in God's eyes will be exalted by God. Humility, what Jesus is talking about, is a beautiful virtue where we live from our center, where we realize who we are. And that means we realize that we all are sinners. Every one of us here is imperfect. Every one of us has more to do, more to grow in our lives, to, to live more fully from that center of our being. And so it's, it's the, the Pharisees and, and so on, they were uh, exalting themselves, they were arrogant, they were proud. But the other extreme is also not good, where we simply put ourselves on, I'm nobody, I'm trash, I, I have nothing to offer. That is just as bad as the other extreme of pride and arrogance. When we live from our center, we know we are God's children. And so we have a certain dignity given to us by God. Whatever job we have, whatever educational level we have, whatever we look like, whatever we wear, whatever car we drive, that doesn't matter. What matters is I am a child of God. That's who I am in my center. And so again, what Jesus calls us to, what God calls us to during Lent is to live more fully, more consciously, uh, from our center and not worry so much about what's on the circumference uh, that again it's not that it's bad but it's just not our essence so may we all this Lent uh, really try to live from that center of who we are that we are God's children and live accordingly live the dignity of that and live the responsibility of what it means to be a child of God And now we stand and offer our prayers to the Lord this morning. Lord, we praise you and thank you for the dignity, the great uh, gift you give us of being your children. And may we continually remind ourselves of what that means, both that we are sinners and that we need your help, we need your love and goodness in our lives, but also that we are worthwhile, that our lives have a purpose that we are called uh, to this great dignity in our lives for ourselves and for others. We pray to the Lord. We pray, Lord, especially during this Lenten season, that we would grow uh, closer to uh, you, that we would live from the center of our beings, from what is important, and be willing to let go of those things that are superficial in our lives, that we spend so much time and energy and money 
uh, um, on that we would focus on what is truly important. We pray to the Lord. And our Mass today is especially offered uh, this morning for Pedro Edward Villarosa or Villarosa. Uh, and this evening's intention is for the repose of Ledia Garcia Rios. So we lift both of them up to the Lord and we ask God to bless them and their loved ones. We pray to the Lord. And now in a few moments of silence, we lift up to God our personal intentions. For all these needs, we pray to the Lord. Lord God, we praise and thank you for all your goodness to us. Help us to be humble so that you may exalt us. We make our prayers through Christ our Lord. Please be seated. I think many of us know the refrain for the song, Center of My Life. O Lord, you are the center of my life. I will always praise you. I will always serve you. I will always keep you in my sight. O Lord, you are the center of my life. I will always praise you. I will always serve you. I will always keep you in my sight. O Lord, you are the center of my life. I will always praise you. I will always serve you. I will always keep you in my sight. One more time. O Lord, you are the center of my life. I will always praise you. I will always serve you. I will always keep you in my sight. Pray, my brothers and sisters, that this our sacrifice and that we ourselves might be acceptable to our loving and almighty God. Be pleased to work your sanctification within us by means of these mysteries, O Lord, and by it may we be cleansed of earthly faults and led to the gifts of heaven through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God. For through bodily fasting, you restrain our faults, raise up our minds, and bestow both virtue and its rewards through Christ our Lord. Through him the angels praise your majesty, dominions adore and powers tremble before you. Heaven and the virtues of heaven and the blessed seraphim worship together with exultation. May our voices, we pray, join with theirs in humble praise as we acclaim. Holy, 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 Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, and all you have created rightly gives you praise. For through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power and working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and make them holy. And you never cease to gather a people to yourself so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, O Lord, we humbly implore you, by the same Spirit, graciously make holy these gifts we have brought to you for consecration, that they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. 
For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice. And giving you thanks, he said the blessing and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. Save us, Savior of the world, for by your cross and resurrection you have set us free. Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven, and as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray, upon the oblation of your church and recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you will to reconcile us to yourself. Grant that we who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son and filled with his Holy Spirit may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of our God and Lord Jesus Christ, with, your, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with your blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, with Saint Dominic and all the saints on whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for unfailing help. May this sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the worlds. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth, with your servant Francis our Pope, and Jose our Bishop, the Order of Bishops, all the clergy, and the entire people you have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family whom you have summoned before you. In your mercy, uh, in your compassion, O merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world. To our departed brothers and sisters and to all who were pleasing to you at their passing from this life, give kind admittance to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow on the world all that is good. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. We stand once again and we pray in the words that Jesus our Savior taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity 
in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Thank you. Now let us safely offer each other a sign of peace. Peace be with you all. Peace. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Lamb of God. My brothers and sisters, behold Jesus, the Lamb of God who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Once again, we say the act of spiritual communion for those who cannot receive communion with us today. My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the most holy sacrament. I love you above all things, and I desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot at this moment receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you were already there and unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen.
Let us pray. May the refreshment of the sacred table, O Lord, we pray, bring us an increase in devoutness of life and the constant help of your work of conciliation through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Let us go in peace, glorifying the Lord by our lives. Thank you, Marty.